Welcome back everyone. Today it's a bit more of an overcast day than we've had in the past few weekends but still it's nice and warm and it's dry. I've got a few things I need to do today. I need to fix my lawnmower. I'm going to be putting together some neem oil mixture to help my mother with her aphid problem and I'm going to show you around some of the things I've been doing in the raised beds and then we'll take you around the greenhouse. I had a comment in my last video from Mason Clifford. He wanted to know why I top my plants, uh, how to do it. I'm actually creating a video about topping chili peppers. Uh, it'll be part of my beginner's guide to growing chili peppers. And I'm in the midst of doing that right now. I'm just, I want to show the progress uh, comparing a plant that hasn't been topped to a plant that has been topped. That'll come out in the next couple of weeks, but thank you for the comment, Mason. So let's go take a look at the raised beds and let's get my, my jobs done for the day. So first I'm going to show you these supports. Uh, it's pretty straightforward how I've done this. Uh, these are going to be used for my little patty pan squashes. And basically it's just two stakes in the ground. They're quite deep, I'd say probably about that far down in the ground over there. So I've hammered those in. And then we've just got some chicken wire mesh over here. I put a bit of a brace at the top just to keep this apart. So pulling these two beams across. So this is the other structure that I've built. Let me come back a bit so you can see the whole thing. That there will be used for my gem squashes, which can be quite large. They're about the size of a baseball, uh, maybe a little bit bigger than that. So last year when I grew the gem squashes, um, I think I showed them in a couple of videos, they just spread everywhere and they dig into the ground, they root wherever they land and they grow, well, horizontally if you don't have a support for them. And it's not a good idea. So what I'm doing this year is I've created the support over here, which I didn't want to spend a ton of money doing this. And I found that this is probably one of the cheapest ways to do it. You can get these arches uh, for about six pounds, seven pound. I got two of them and put them side by side and I've reinforced them with another stake on each side. This here is driven quite deep into the ground. I've zip tied these together in the middle here. So hopefully I'll have the gem squash growing from the bottom here all the way up and round the arch. It should be quite pretty as well as functional. And then I'll grow some in the middle there, up against this fencing, which I've put in place over here as well. So it should be able to climb and fill up this bed. So this will just be for my gem squashes. I think it should do quite a good job. These here on their own, they're not very stable, but with a bit of reinforcement, they're actually, they're, they're pretty good. And I think they should hold quite well. We'll see as the year goes on. I might be uh, making a video in six months time when the gem squashes are pulling this whole thing down with the weight, but I'll keep you updated. And a quick update uh, with the radishes and the pak choy that I planted last week. They already are starting to sprout and we have quite a few coming up, especially on the radishes. So you can see there, they're looking really good. And they'll start growing very quickly now. The pak choy are also coming up. Nothing yet coming up from the little gem lettuce. As well as the peas, nothing really showing over there just yet. However, the peas that we've started here in the greenhouse uh, a little bit earlier than the ones from outside, they've all come up nicely. As well as gem squashes, we've got four over there. We have two over here. And we have one more over here. You can also see all the pak choy. I've thinned them out and put them in the individual pots. So they're all starting to come up nicely. We're gonna have so many pak choy. I think I've grown a few too many because obviously the ones outside have started to come up as well. But I enjoy pak choy, so not a problem for me. You can see with the chili peppers, we're having lots of new growth, lots of new leaves coming up. So they're doing very well. You can see the ones here that I've topped. Like I said, I will show you a topping video where I do a comparison between a topped plant and one that I haven't topped. 
You can see the ones that I have topped here, so I've got two different varieties that I'm comparing. But I actually topped the rest of the plants as well. And you can see this is why we top. If you see this one specifically, it actually lost all its leaves when I topped it. I was a bit too vigorous with the topping, but we can see there new growth has come through anyway. So that should be quite a bushy plant. It has set it back quite a little bit. I think it will recover and we should have quite a good plant out of that one. So here's a better example of a plant that I've topped. So you can see here where I've cut the stem, we have this new growth that's popped up over there. And that's basically what you're trying to do with topping is you want to stimulate growth below where you've topped it. And you see the same thing is happening here. So where I've cut, it, cut the stem over here, we have these branches coming out and down there as well. And that'll make this a nice bushy plant instead of a long, tall plant. So I don't know if you remember my jalapenos from last year, they were reaching the ceiling and um, it got a little bit challenging to try stake them up and keep them from falling over and breaking branches. Here's another great example. This is my pepper dew. And we can see here, this one also lost all its leaves, but look at all the new growth that's coming through there. And one last example, we can see there, again, where it was topped, we see all the new growth below it all popping up. Here's my little radish experiment. They're all growing very well. Um, not a hell of a lot of difference. I think probably the store-bought is winning at the moment, but I think the real proof will be once we, uh, once we weigh the radishes at the end of the experiment. But that'll be a future video and I'll show you that from end to end. My mother is having a few problems with lily beetles eating her plants and uh, I told her about something that I use with my chili plants when the aphids come. It's a fantastic little mix that it pretty much it takes care of so many problem bugs. I'll be doing a full episode for my beginner's guide series as soon as we start having some problems like aphids in the greenhouse. But until then, here's a bit of a preview of what I use. It's nice and easy. The primary ingredient is neem oil. And this stuff's great. It's a little smelly. It smells like garlic, I guess. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's an odd it's garlic and peanuts. Uh, it's a strange smell, but it works really well. It works great with things like aphids and obviously lily beetles, as well as many other things. They, they really don't like the smell. They, um, it, it won't affect your plants. It won't affect the, it, 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 it's non-toxic. So if you want, you can drink that. It doesn't taste great, but if you want to, you can. Um, so it's not going to affect your plants, it's not going to affect your vegetables, it's, they're still going to be edible. You're not putting poison on your plants and it does a great job. Let me show you how I mix it. So I use a sprayer like this. Uh, just makes it easy to apply something with a bit of a long stem so you can get underneath the leaves and really get to where you need to be. If you, get, if you use a little hand sprayer, it's a bit more of a challenge. You have to move leaves out the way and you could potentially damage your plants. So I like these, you can really get in there and spray around as you need to. The mix is pretty straightforward. For something this size, it's a five liter container. So just over a gallon, uh, that's an imperial gallon. So US gallon is a little bit less than this. I think US gallon is just about three and a half liters or something like that. It's pretty straightforward. You can't overdose on this, so don't, don't worry too much. For a typical gallon of this, you would use a teaspoon of neem oil. I'm going to do about it, probably two teaspoons in here. Ugh, that looks like sludge. A little tip when you are mixing this, use warm water. It'll help the neem oil mix in a bit easier. The other thing you're going to add is dishwashing liquid. Any, any of them will do. They're all non-toxic as well. Um, else you wouldn't be able to use them on your plates. About the same amount as you use on the neem oil, you use the fairy liquid. So in this case, we'll do two teaspoons. This will also help the neem oil mix in with the water. 
and then just fill it up. And that's it, just screw it back on. Make sure it's properly sealed. And there you go. You can just pressurize it a little bit. And, and there you go, nice fine spray. So that's ready to go. Ready for my mother to use and get rid of her lily beetles. So I need to get uh, this sorted out. You can see I showed you on the last video this came off. It's not really good workmanship. But you can see here, I think it was held on with like pop rivets or something like that. So all that I'm going to do is get some 5mm nuts and bolts and put through there and put that through there so hopefully that will do the job there we go flaps all sorted out now some bolts on underneath there so that should hopefully stay in so that's it for today's episode we'll see you again on the next one Bye-bye for now.